Hey, it's Takedown, everybody. Welcome. I'm Scott Casper, a special Nike hot seat guest today. We go out to Washington. It's an early part of the day. It's morning out there, and uh, very, very pleased to be able to introduce to you somebody who's been recognized as the real deal in the world of wrestling. He's a four-time NCAA champion, a four-time academic All-American, an Olympic alternate for 92 and 96, Named the 95 unofficial champion of the world after winning the Ivan Pod uh, Ivan Podobny tournament, uh, the second U.S. athlete to ever do so. He joins us now. Does Dan Russell? Dan, how are you? I am doing excellent. It's so good to be with you, Scott. This is uh, wonderful to be in the Nike hot seat this morning. How about that? A former Nike athlete, Dan. I mean, you were sponsored by Nike in your early years. N Nike was great to me. Uh, I'm a. I'm a very thankful for all that Nike did in helping me in my wrestling career in a time when uh, there was not a lot of help in wrestling. And it's been fun to watch as wrestling is really growing and, and the opportunities that athletes now have today are, are, are outstanding. You know the name Dan Russell? Well, how about Joe Russell? These guys uh, were raised as twins. And, uh, and I always thought you were, honestly, but you guys are actually about a year, year apart, year and four months. We're a year, one week and a half apart. Year, so, one week and a half. Yeah. Okay, but you went through school together. We did. I, you know, I, I'm, I'm a year older, and Joe just says I'm better looking. Well, um, and that may be. Uh, we don't judge. <laughs> we don't judge. <laughs> Joe, listen to Joe. I think Sadie might disagree. I don't know. <laughs> but here's, here's our topic uh, uh, at, hand, <clears throat> at hand today. You have a new book out. It's called Finish Strong. The... Dan Russell's story. And you know me, I get a little bit choked up over great stories. Well, this one is, you know, we've been telling the Russell story uh, in bits and pieces over the years on our radio programs, TV shows, etc. Uh, but this book does a great job of chronicling your life in the sport, where you are today, what you're doing, how you are continuing your your trip through the sport and through life. So let's let's talk a bit about the book first. How did the book come about, Dan? A, a writing of a book is not easy. No, it's not. And it's it's been it's been quite a journey. You know, I tell people I started I started writing the book when I was nineteen, and uh, I'm nineteen years old. I'm 120 pages in, and this is back. Uh, you know, when when you're typing and and uh, make mistakes. You got to use white out. And uh, my my brother looks at me and says, "What are you doing?" And I said, "I'm writing a book." He said, "You're 19. You're going to be embarrassed what you wrote when you're 19. When you're 40, why don't you go live your book and then write it?" <laughs> so I, I I put everything down and thought that sounds like wisdom. And I went out to try to live a great story. And this is your brother, your younger brother, my offering young, up his pearls of wisdom. Brother. Yes, my younger brother. So uh, <laughs> at 40, I could not wait till my 40th birthday. Now, a lot of people dread, you know, that t getting the big 4-0, but 40 was the year of release for me. That was the year where I could finally go back to something that I really wanted to do. It had been on my bucket list of, of things to accomplish. And so at 40, I began working on it, and I realized real quick that uh, writers write, and um, – I'd been out living a great story. I hadn't been writing. So it only took me eight years to, <laughs> from the time that I started it to the point of it being released. Wow. And, and, then, and the struggle in the telling of a story is uh, grasping an idea of brutal honesty. Yeah, and, and there's, there's some, some pieces to this that were really helpful to me in this, is that uh, you know, in 1991, the Oregonian... Uh, followed my my senior year of wrestling. In fact, in the in the book, there's a place that um, we put a, a site that you can go to and you can read what they what they printed during my senior year. But they had a writer and a photographer that followed me around for months, and uh, they went to all of my classes. They they talked to every girl that I'd ever dated. They talked to every coach that I'd ever had, and. And they ended up running an article in, in the Oregonian that ran for three days and ended up being nine full pages of the Oregonian uh, after that three-day series. And, and the writer won all kinds of national awards for it. Uh, but the experience of reading that article, uh, the things that uh, he caught, the, the, um, 
uh, those very vulnerable places of your life, mm-hmm. the the places that uh, you know you 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 don't you, you kind of live in secret that you don't want the world to necessarily know, and all of a sudden it's in print and it's there for the world to see, was uh, uh, an incredibly uh, woundable experience for me. In fact, I, when I read it, I I, I cried. Uh, I just wept and wept and wept because of the. Uh, the rawness and the vulnerability. Uh, they, he talks about in the in the article, and this is something you never want to go out public. But I'd lost a match. I'd lost a, a key match, and I'd lost three to two. And I was, I was so frustrated because it felt like my feet weren't moving, and and why weren't my feet moving the way that should? And and so I went home and I, I pulled my toenails out, out of frustration. Wow. Um. And, uh, and the writer, uh, had seen my, my toes and asked me about what well, ended up in this paper. Um, uh, the story of my parents' divorce was in this paper. My brother's motorcycle accident, the intimacy and vulnerability was in this article. And, uh, it was just like my life was right there in front for everybody to see. And so when I began writing at 40, I realized that if, if I'm going to tell the story, I need, I, I, I need to open up the vulnerability of the struggle, the, the, the different areas that I've walked through where uh, it has to be honest, it has to be uh, vulnerable, and, and, uh, um, and I think it's the journey that every one of us face. In fact, I'm finding a lot of people that are reading it that are connecting to it that have no background in the sport of wrestling whatsoever, but they're they're being invited into my world and the wrestling world. But what they're discovering is life is a wrestling match, life and the same struggles that. that we've all go through uh, that a wrestler goes through, they can identify with. And so, um, it's been fun to watch a, a lot of women that have read it that have been um, really moved and impacted, and um, and finding a real general appeal to it. So. We're talking with Dan Russell, the new book out, of course, Finish Strong, the Dan Russell story uh, that has just a, an amazing appeal. If you haven't picked up on it, you can do so. It's from Rising Star Studios, and it's available online at Amazon.com or at Battleground, battleground.tv. We encourage you to pick up this book. If you haven't been inspired lightly or need some inspiration in your life, uh, Dan Russell is the living embodiment of that. He's uh, a guy that's been there, done that as an athlete, as a coach. Uh, he's uh, literally wrestled his way around the world. Uh, he's taught for several years at the Olympic Training Center in Colorado Springs, and he's a senior pastor at Battleground Four Squares Church in Washington. He's also a motivational speaker for colleges, businesses, and church groups around the world as well. And uh, I find myself just absolutely um, enthralled. I sit and listen to everything you say. So I'm going to offer up a few bullets. Okay. If I, if I can, um, for, uh, you to talk about from the book. Okay. So there might be a little phrase or a bullet and I need the first things that come out of your mouth or come out of your head rather out your mouth. Um, first of all, boxing. Well, you know, my my dad my dad's first love was was wrestling. So wrestling was a big part of our life. We had our first singlet at eighteen months old. Uh, but my dad was always trying to find creative ways for um, to raise money and support for the athletic program. He was coaching at Homedale, Idaho, and uh, the Homedale Trojans. So my brother and I were 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 uh, we're not even in grade school yet, and my dad puts on a big smoker event. Now, smoker events back in the day was a boxing event where you'd pair up, uh, they'd pair up some of their star athletes. Uh, they'd have faculty members that would box each other. And, and uh, you know, it was amateur boxing. It was uh, um, uh, not, not your guys that have been out training and the most skilled. And, and sometimes those are some of the best fights because there's a lot of action <laughs> And everyone knows everybody, and it brings the whole community out. So my dad got this brilliant idea that my brother and I could be a part of the smoker event and and uh, and kick the thing off. Now, in our mind, as little kids, this was we were the main event. I mean, we we were the most important fight of the. Of course, my dad probably helped feed into that, and and uh, I got out in that crowd with with. Uh, you know, we're talking that Homedale is not a big town, but it felt like the whole town was there, and you, the the boxing ring sitting right in the middle of the gym, and 
and being in that environment, my adrenaline kicked in, and um, uh, it was not a, a a good thing for my brother's face. In fact, when when we got home, my brother's face began to swell. My my uh, my parents uh, panicked. My mom obviously saying, "What did you just do?" Um, uh, I just felt like this was the the greatest victory of all time, and thought I was going to be, you know, the hero of Homedale uh, High School. And uh, um, so that that boxer event though was really where I began to understand just in me this this competitiveness, this love to to be in front of a crowd, and and uh, um, and then obviously wrestling was was the main vehicle for our life, sure. but. Uh, that was my big boxing career, and uh, it was done after that big event. My dad uh, and my mother uh, not pleased with, with with what had happened to my brother and his face. But if I uh, and by the way, your father Rick, uh, yes, your mother uh, Marilyn, because they divorced. At, at how old were you when they divorced? Uh, it was our sophomore year of high school. Sophomore year, and how did you and Joe deal with that in terms of? I mean, it can be rough on kids. It can be rough on parents. It can be rough on the whole family dynamic. It was. Uh, it, it was. Uh, I think divorce for anybody is uh, a traumatic experience. But uh, for us, we didn't see it coming. Uh, our parents were so involved in our lives. Uh, my dad was pastoring a church. I, it just seemed to go against everything that we had. Uh, we had been taught that we'd been grown grown up to to believe. Um, and it came to a surprise, it came to a surprise to everybody and it was very public and, uh, and that made it even, uh, more challenging and difficult and processing, you know, it was a, a point in my life where I had processing wrestling was something we had always done as a family. And now all of a sudden, uh, our family wasn't a family. Uh, the thought of how important is wrestling in light of, of, of this and do I really want to continue wrestling? Um, I mean, all of those questions and emotions, I think, um, you get faced with when, when life gets tough and all of a sudden you realize there's, there's something more. Uh, um, so yeah, the divorce was extremely painful experience. And it is for, I think everybody, but wrestling can perhaps be that, uh, that much needed, uh, focal point that uh, can help you get through it too. The battles on the mat can be the battles of the heart as well. The glimpse from the top of the world. If I say that, what comes? Yeah. Through? So, um, you know, one of our one of my goals as a kid was was to become a world champion at the uh, schoolboy cadet level, and uh, and so had trained really hard. In fact, uh, one year they were going to Stockholm, Sweden. We we went to compete at the Bob Devaney Sports Center there in Lincoln, Nebraska, and and I ended up second in both freestyle and Greco. Just missed going to Stockholm, Sweden, and was devastated and so really put efforts in the next year next year the world championships were in mexico city and uh uh, my brother and i both made the team that year and um and then not just made the team but both of us came home world champions at the at the cadet level which was again a glimpse from the top of the world it was uh, a taste of seeing uh, what the ultimate goal was the ultimate goal was to be the best in the world uh, at the olympic level and that gave us the taste uh, gave us the 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 sense that we can do this one of the things that my dad did really well though growing up with um with developing us in the sport of wrestling was he wanted to use wrestling as a tool or as a vehicle to to help shape us and to mold us and to teach us about things in life. So my dad wasn't as concerned about wins and losses as he was about opportunities to teach. So everything was a life lesson. You'd win a great match, there was a life lesson attached to it. You you would lose an epic match, there was a life lesson to it. And my dad wanted to make sure that we were having uh, enough success and he also wants us to experience enough uh, struggle and defeat and process that. So um, he was always finding us competition. We were, you know, we were in high school wrestling the U.S. Open tournaments. We uh, were wrestling up in the Canadian Open. We we just found competition wherever it was, and 
and the idea of, of really loving the sport, loving wrestling, loving the, the journey and the struggle and the things that wrestling can teach and opportunities for teachable moments uh, was something that my dad was very good at, at, uh, at utilizing the sport to help, again, to help shape and mold us. Help shaping and molding, and of course, uh, it's all outlined in the book very well. It's a well-told story. If I say, uh, Joe, bike accident and challenge, what comes to mind? Well, all you really need to say was Joe. Um, my brother, the reason why I wanted to write a book when I was 19 is my brother's story is a story that has to be told. It's a story that I believe needs to be told, and, and I think it's a story that's important for, um, um, for anybody that's walked through any kind of difficult uh, struggle in life. Watching my brother navigate um, pain and struggle and heartache in a way that uh, he, I, I think is absolutely inspiring. In fact, so my brother at 16 was... Uh, Possibly one of the greatest wrestlers in the history of our nation at that level. He, at 16, he was not only the high school state champion, he was the national champion in both Greco and freestyle. He went on to compete at the university nationals, wrestling NCAA champions, NCAA All-Americans, wrestling the best of the best, and he was the number one guy at, the, at that level at 16. And I, I try to explain to people, it's, it's like taking your high school football program and going against the top NCAA Division I football programs. And uh, my brother was uh, number one in the nation. But he didn't stop there. He went to compete at the Olympic level. And again, it's like taking a high school football program now and going against your top NFL programs. It's a whole nother level. Uh, you know, you reach your peak about 28, 29, 30 years old in the sport of wrestling. Here he's 16 wrestling guys in their peak. And my brother was the third ranked wrestler in the nation at 16 years of age. He was just doing amazing things. He came back from that summer full of wrestling. He said, Dan, there was one thing missing. And I said, what's that, Joe? He said, you weren't there with me. And this next year, we're going to be there together. And so my brother and I, every year, we'd sit down and write out our goals and our dreams and what we wanted to accomplish and the steps it was going to take to, to get there. We wrote these things out. We called a coach, a teammate. We read him our goals. And we went for a six-mile run, came back from our six-mile run and went to head to the high school. And I hopped in the car with a coach and my brother hopped on the back of a motorcycle with a teammate. And we were just going two blocks. But in two blocks, my brother was in a very serious motorcycle accident. Um, I saw the accident happen. Uh, it was uh, uh, something that I'll never forget. Um, got there, tried to stop my brother from bleeding, uh, called the ambulance, got my mom and dad. We rushed to the hospital. When we got there, the doctors met us, and they told us that it didn't look good. In fact, they said it didn't look good at all, and, and they began to ask us questions what we wanted to do with my brother's organs. Uh, mm -hmm. They recommended we start thinking about funeral arrangements. I mean, it was, it was not very hopeful. After hours and hours of surgery, they, they came out, and they told us my brother was still alive, but they went and sat us down. They said, you need to understand. They said, there's seven reasons medically that Joe should have died instantly upon impact. They said he knocked a three-inch hole in the top of his head. They said they found fragments of a skull that were buried clear down the very center of his brain, and they estimated he lost a third of a cup of brain matter on the pavement. Wow. They said, uh, uh, we don't understand why he's still alive, but you need to understand he'll never walk. He'll never talk. He'll never be able to eat or drink or do anything normal like you or I. He's going to spend the rest of his life in a coma in the hospital. In a, you know, in a, that's the best that you can expect. And uh, just a few days later, nurse was walking around my brother's bed, and, and uh, my brother looked at the nurse and said, I'm cold. <laughs> and she started crying because he wasn't supposed to talk. She came and got us. We were crying. Meanwhile, we left my brother in bed freezing to death. We finally pulled ourselves together. We got him a blanket. We said, Joe, is there anything else we could do for you? He said, yeah. He said, I'm hungry. Well, the doctors explained to him, and the whole left side of his body was paralyzed. And they said his throat muscles would be paralyzed. He wouldn't be able to swallow. Well, Joe had been cutting weight all year, so he looked at the doctor and said, Doctor, I'm a wrestler. I'll never forget how to eat. <laughs> and uh, so they gave him a glass of water, said, Joe, if you can drink a glass of water down, we'll let you, we'll let you eat something. Joe drank a glass of water. I ran off to McDonald's and, and smuggled in a, a, a burger from McDonald's for his first meal. Oh, man. I'm but sure watch <laughs> my brother navigate this, uh, this traumatic accident, a guy with all kinds of promise, 
uh, a guy that was doing unbelievable things in our sport, um, uh, watching him navigate uh, this tragedy um, was incredible. In fact, so much so that when we were in high school, both Michael Landon Productions and Disney were trying to buy the rights to my brother's story for a film. Wow. And uh, the NCAA said if my brother signed the rights over for a film, he couldn't compete in college. And my brother's dream was to compete. And he wanted to compete again. So he turned that down and uh, ended up going to the University of Minnesota and, and wrestled for them and, and uh, became a coach there, assistant coach there for many years. And now the head coach at George Mason University. His story, though, is a story that's incredibly inspiring, uh, motivating. And I said, anybody that's gone, gone through any difficult thing in their life can learn something from my brother's story. He was asked this in an interview when he was at University of Minnesota. They, they said, tell, tell, us, tell us what it's like to have gone through this accident and how you feel about it. And, and my brother said, you know, there are so many more positive things that have come from this accident than negative. He said, this accident was a good experience for me. Wow. Because what he began to see is in the midst of life, life's hard. Life's a wrestling match. Life is full of hurdles and challenges and uh, difficult things. But it's in those places that you discover things that uh, that that's the beauty in life. If you can find beauty in the ashes. Um, and I've watched my brother uh, do that in remarkable ways. I can remember my brother talking about a time where he was in the hospital uh, he, his left side was paralyzed. The, his right arm had a, uh, had a scar that had burned across his forearm from laying over the top of the exhaust pipe in the accident. And it was all scabbed up and it began to itch. And, and uh, my brother was in the middle of the night in this hospital and couldn't take his left arm to scratch his right arm because the left arm was paralyzed. He said he tried everything that night to scratch this, this itch and he couldn't couldn't do it and he got to this place of realizing he was so low and so um, helpless that he couldn't even scratch his own arm here's a guy that you know months before was was doing incredible things in the sport of wrestling now can't scratch his own arm and he began to cry and uh, and he did something significant that was I think a game changer for him as he cried out to God and he said, God, I, I, I can't do this. This is too much for me. And it was in the midst of that room, in the midst of that night, that he felt the presence of God in that room in a way that he can never fully explain. But he, he understood from that point on that uh, this tragedy was too much for him to handle on his own. But with God, he could go through anything. And from there, it began to give him a perspective, a whole different perspective on life. Uh, that has now, I, I've watched him really touch and change and impact and, and inspire and motivate uh, so many uh, wrestlers that have gone on to win uh, NCAA uh, All-Americans and champions and uh, guys that have made world teams and Olympic teams, guys that have medaled in the Olympics, uh, that my brother has had a part of, of coming alongside and encouraging and coaching and teaching and and uh, giving a perspective to life that I think uh, lasts far beyond the sport. Our guest today has been Dan Russell, and uh, Dan has been a friend of ours for a number of years. He can be that to you as well. Through his new book from Rising Star Studios and Battleground.tv, the challenge is inevitable, the feat is optional, and you'll find his career, his life, described in this book, a story well told. The lessons from his life teach us that to finish strong, we must make the choice to fight for our dreams and embrace the struggle. And when we do, the winning will take care of itself. And indeed, it does, and it has for Dan Russell. Dan, it's always good to talk to you up against the time uh, crunch here on the on the clock. But I want to thank you for the, uh, the opportunity to to go through the book, to read it, to ingest it, for the stories you tell and the way they were told. Well done, sir. Well, thank you. It's been, been a real privilege to be a part of it. And I, I do want to finish with this. Uh, we've, the book's only been out for a few months, and we've already sold film rights for it. And uh, the dream of seeing my brother's story be told, uh, not just in book form, but uh, you will be seeing a film uh, come from this. And it's... Uh, uh, something that I think a story that's going to, 
I hope it becomes a signature film for the sport of wrestling, for people outside of the sport to begin to understand the beauty of what we in the sport understand. Well, it is, uh, like I said, outstanding, well told, and I can't wait to see uh, what comes of it. I can't uh, wait to see what they do. Hollywood has a way of telling our stories in good ways and in 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 different ways, but I hope yes. this one they can wrap their arms around. It surely looks like a great opportunity for the sport. Uh, sharing it is uh, often the best thing we do. Finish Strong is the name of the book, The Dan Russell Story. Dan Russell's been our guest in the Nike hot seat today. And again, it is always great to catch up, give our best to the entire family, especially your mom, Marilyn. She's uh, what a joy she is, your mom, Marilyn. Would you? Absolutely. She's a great cheerleader. She absolutely has been in the corner every step of the way. Dan, thank you so much. We'll catch up with you again soon. Keep us posted on the film, the continuing success of the book as well. Appreciate the time today. Thank you so much, Scott. Great to be here on the Nike Hot Seat.